We have been an MP and we are rebuilding this schooner so we can go and live on it and travel the world. But first, we've got to do this fiberglass on the roof. Previously, you saw how we sanded off the old fiberglass and started preparing the roof for fiberglass. In this episode, you see us preparing the wood in order to receive its first layer of epoxy, which will turn it from a plain dry roof into something amazing and shiny. The roof of the superstructure was looking hideous with all those lumps and bumps and pastes and cracks and all that. So we have filled all of it, or at least most of it in. Uh, Nico is now giving it a nice big sand down to the wood so we can see what's been missed, what needs to be filled in still, and what colors might need to be changed because we'll only find out what color the compound has to be once the wood has been varnished because the color is gonna change completely from a kind of brown to maybe even a red, or like a Bordeaux. So that's happening over there. Not much other stuff can happen. So the varnishing has been put on hold because of all the sawdust. I'm really curious to see what this boat's gonna look like once all the old varnish has been removed, including the masts, and the new varnish has been put back on. Uh, it is gonna be a hell of a work. We've got a bunch of sanding machines going at the same time, and we've got a bunch of people helping each other also making the work a lot faster, especially with epoxy that dries out so fast. Nico is doing an amazing job at this because not only do you have to smooth it nice and sand it nice and smooth, but also you have to keep the arch in it so the middle part is the highest and the sides are the lowest. So he's got a little baton that he's using to make sure he's sanding everything flat so there's no little lumps in it, but also he's following the lines of the roof, which you can see here maybe. They curve up, around, and down there very slightly but just enough for the water to not get caught in the middle gone back a step or two so we had filled all these holes and cracks with uh, epoxy mixed with some brown segments yellow a bit of black red whatever to make this color match and it did however the epoxy color turned out to be lighter they're a lot lighter than the wood where we started making it after varnishing which varnish will give it the same effect as the fiberglass and over here where we started darkening the color, it was too dark. So we've actually bought a bunch more uh, pigmentation pigment colors based on different woods. So we are choosing to use a cedar color to fill in the holes here. And over there, José David is actually sanding off some of the current wood to maybe use uh, this sawdust to make the epoxy instead. So here we have brown mahogany powder, imbuya powder, chestnut powder, and cedar. So they're not exactly the woods themselves. It's not sawdust or powder. It's actually just an artificial coloring that makes the same color. And over here, we've got the one from the roof itself that is sawdust. Uh, we've got a few little pieces of the wood itself that aren't, well, from an old piece from your boat which we're gonna sand, chisel some holes into, and do some, a few tests. I'm not sure if we got anywhere with this because we just got a whole palette of very, very dark colors. So we are gonna let it dry over lunchtime, sand it down and varnish it, see what it looks like. This stain, I know, I guess it's kind of stain, you mix it with ethanol actually, and you paint a wood. So you mix uh, five, let's take a wood that everyone kind of knows here, chestnut. 
you mix 15 grams of this powder with one liter of ethanol and you just use it as a stain for a wood. So we actually made quite a bit and we ended up chucking it away. And this is the cedar one. So here's just the, some old wood with some cedar chucked over the top of it. So you can really see the difference it makes, except mixing it with epoxy, it just becomes, you get some light in there. Very, <coughs> very dark. So we're still gonna see what we can do with the colors. I'm hoping one of these will become a little less dark over lunchtime. We've written next to them what they are. Um, and we'll see. The problem with this epoxy is it's just see-through when you throw in the very fine sawdust. It's just see-through liquid with little flakes of sawdust in it. It doesn't really color the epoxy. I've managed to find a epoxy color or a little tint pigment that actually works for this roof. It's gonna look like this. So we'd rather have it showing that we filled it and telling a bit of a story than really trying to find the nice same color of the wood and it not exactly being the same. Like you tried, but you failed. So this is really nice. It's gonna look exactly like this with the, well, of course it's gonna be fiberglass over the top. But we're stopping, we're gonna let that dry and we're gonna chuck this top over the top because I don't know if you can see a lot of rain is on the way. We're gonna start working on throwing a tarp nice and tall. I'm gonna lower this just a little bit so I can stand under it. I'm gonna throw a tarp over this and tighten it really nicely. Well, for that to work, we have to remove this sail. For that, we've already fastened two of the shrouds to the bow. Uh, so this mast is already a bit stronger than it was before. We're gonna just fasten the aft stay onto the back as well, onto the transom. So this mast is strong and then we can just start working with the tarps because we're going to start letting this dry but also start working on it, sanding on it, filling up some gaps and the sun's really getting to it. I don't know if you can see some tiny little cracks from where it's really drying out. It's not an issue but we want to prevent it. So our plan is to now really just cover the boat without it sticking to the wood so it gets some place under to dry and for us to work.
And there we go, the mast is still standing. Of course, one of us, well, I'll go up the mast and I'll drop the sail so we can store it and send it off to some maintenance. And what's really cool, I just realized, is once this is nicely varnished with about 10 layers of varnish, we can attach this BBD that we once had. And this whole bow area will be a nice relaxing beer and coffee area. Put some bean bags there during the works. So hurry up. this is it we'll have to sand off a little bit of the tips but about from that you need a hole through here and that's gonna hold it, it looks like that's gonna ice cream hold sandwich. it Super hot. I'm happy about this tarp, tarp already, but I don't know if it's actually preventing wind from coming here or if it's actually just helping us from the sun. But anyway, it's very hot. It's very good because the deck's dry and we can work. We're gonna leave all the works for now, except for one job, which is the roof over here. So all the, everything's been sanded roughly already, top as well, but now it's all got to be leveled out. So Nico's gonna grab the big sanding machine over there. And we're gonna make sure it's nice and round all the way on the whole boat. So here, so the water runs off it around the whole boat. And then we're gonna go with some oscillating sanding machines to make sure all the little cuts and marks are out so we can already apply a first layer of just pure epoxy to then put the fiberglass on. Thank you. 
Sanding machines. Because Nico has one, JB has the other one. And the other ones are too aggressive, so at least if you sand in line with the grain, it takes out lots of the bad bits and it also takes out lots of the little lumps. I'm quite happy with it. I bought it for the roof, but that was too difficult. What's about to happen now is so exciting. We've been working so much for this moment that's just about to happen. The guys are now behind me cleaning the roof completely with ethanol, with alcohol, so we can remove the humidity, the moist of the wood, so it will be ready to receive the first layer of epoxy. As you might know, we are planning on leaving this roof completely transparent. We're gonna apply epoxy and also a fiberglass layer. And we know this is quite a decision because for it to be really, really, really strong, we should add loads of layers of fiber and then paint on top because it doesn't become transparent. But we really want to keep it transparent. So we're taking the risk and we are aware of the consequences. Hopefully, it will work and it will stay strong just with few layers of fiberglass enough for it to be strong but also stay transparent if it doesn't work then oh well we're gonna add more fiber on top and then paint it and it's gonna be that but at least for now it's gonna be transparent we're taking the risk and we really 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 hope it works because i think it's gonna be so 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 beautiful Oh yeah, that's about to happen very soon because the guys are just finishing cleaning and after that, the box is coming. Are you ready? I'm not sure I am. <laughs> I always say, are you ready? Because I am, but today, I'm not sure I'm ready. <laughs> so this is the roof looking ready for the boxy. Are we ready? Are we ready? The reason we're doing this, and it's actually dark outside, it's actually the, one of the first times we're using this light outside the boat, is it's gonna start raining soon, if not at 9 p.m. tonight, which is in a few hours, and we don't wanna waste all this sanding we've done. So this is literally all sanded up to a high grit with all different sanding machines, and I, we just felt that if we didn't cover this with an epoxy today, it would rain tonight until I don't know, five days and we just have to sand it again because all the rain stains and kind of makes the wood shift a bit. So this is what we really wanted to do today, no matter how late. So I'm really happy this is being done. And we're getting there, we're getting there very quickly. And David's the, what's, what should we call him? The epoxy guru. So he's doing 
all the epoxies on all these seams or all, all the gaps and cracks and he's also mixing this epoxy for us so yeah it's going really well and I like it it's so satisfying it's like varnish but it's not it's just like epoxy See me rolling. They hate. <laughs> what other sounds? Rolling. 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 Rolling on the roof. Oh, attack you. A cricket. <laughs> Apparently, this smell. But careful, it's going to get stuck. Oh, I saw. He's eating. Good thing they jump. <laughs> <laughs> they they are good luck. Go. Know. Help him. Maybe he's stuck. Now he's stuck. Yeah. Oh, hey, little guy. How has this experience been so far? First time I'm working with epoxy, I'm sure I've learned a few things that I'll do differently next time, but I think it's alright. Where is the smile for the last bit? Yay! Congratulations! We have finished, but we have one more problem. <laughs> that is the light. But luckily it's not too far. Imagine if we left it in the middle. Lovey, yeah. the floor is lava. Uh, 100%. <laughs> oh, got it. So we are done for today. The guys finally finished putting the epoxy all over the roof. I cannot wait to see it in daylight because now I can see it's already looking very nice, but it's quite dark. And I also want to show you properly. So for now, we're going to leave. It's already 8 p.m. So it's really time to go home. So I'm going to say Bye and let's see you together tomorrow, so good night! Covering the roof with epoxy was a huge milestone that leaves us ready to finally bring the fiberglass on. That will be coming soon, but before saying bye, we would like to thank the donations on PayPal from Kevin and Terry, Parker and the Duke, and Jonathan. And also thank the super thanks from Inacio, Iordanis, Nahua con OpenStreetMap, and Urban Israel. Until next Sunday and thanks for watching.